Erev Tov, Chavrim. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. And guys, just want to kind of bring you up to date on some things that are going on. Uh, Prime Minister Netanyahu has is, uh, is asked to meet with President Putin over uh, a new approach, according to uh, Israel National News, uh, to revise the coordination over the fighting over Syria. Uh, I think that's the right approach. I wish uh, President Barack Obama would have done more of this in the very beginning instead of... Uh, instead of snubbing uh, President Putin over the whole Syrian crisis and, de and trying to defeat ISIS when President Putin was doing a very good job instead, uh, the United States, uh, President Obama uh, and his administration took the opposite uh, policy because their whole purpose was to topple Bashar al-Assad in the first place. They did not want President Putin coming along and helping out Bashar al-Assad. They were hoping that he would just keep the, cheek, the other cheek turned while they totally annihilated this man's government, which is a shame in itself. And that's, with everything aside, guys, we know that prophecy about Damascus becomes a ruinous heap. I realize that. I realize these things are going to happen. Prophecy sometimes are, are given in such a way to where God knows it's going to happen and the prophet prophesies. Look at Ben Haddad, for example. Elisha actually liked Ben Hadad uh, as far as the king because he knew that God had used Ben Hadad as far as in bringing judgment. And the, when the king fell sick, the Syrian king at that time, he sent word to the prophet Elisha to know whether or not he would recover from his illness. And the prophet sends word back to the messenger there that he will recover, but yet he will die. And the messenger thought that was kind of ironic. Well, it was because the prophet knew that the messenger was going to kill Ben Hadad. And he wept over it, not over the fact of Ben Hadad passing away, although Ben Hadad had respect to Elisha the prophet, but because he also knew the evils that the man that would be his successor would do to the children of Israel and would slaughter and kill the women and everything else and, and just be a brutal, brutal man. And, and in modern days today, we do know that there is tremendous prophecies that we have brought them out through Micah chapter 7, uh, where the, the Syrians would become refugees, never to return home again. We see things in Nahum about Nineveh, Mosul, as we'll be speaking about here in just a moment here. They would also flee from the city. Uh, we, we see that Damascus becomes a ruinous heap. We know these prophecies are there. But at the same time, we realize, too, there are still children. There are still people that will be dying in these wars. And I think that regardless of what happens, let's stand on the right side. Let's stand before God to know that we, that we are a voice for innocence. And I think that's what's really important. Like the Israeli woman that recently brought together the vigil right there on Yom Kippur, while we're right here during our high holidays right now, you know, in Sukkot, etc. But in Yom Kippur, she called out for the prayer of the nation to pray for the children that are crying and weeping and mourning and the mothers and the children that have lost mothers. She rallied the nation for prayer for these people. That's the right side to be on in all these conflicts, regardless of which side is which, whether it be the Russians cause the fatalities, the Americans cause the fatalities, it doesn't matter which side is which, there's innocent lives being lost all the time when there is a war. And that's what's the tragedy of this all. The Ukraine, Yemen, Saudi Arabia, Israel, whatever the case may be, is human beings and their souls are being lost. Same with the issues in America, etc. everywhere. All right, let's move on though to other news here as we kind of cover these things here. There has been an assassination of a man that is, uh, no, they call him Motorola, uh, he is uh, uh, Arsny Pavlov. He was a commander in the uh, in the uh, the the separatists, the DPR's defense ministry there in Ukraine. The, in fact, the defense ministry is now calling it a declaration of war. Uh, since his assassination today, uh, he was killed by IED that was placed inside of an elevator. I assume where he lived at when he got in the elevator, the the lift exploded. It killed the man. And uh, now they're bringing about retaliation. From what I understand, that tonight, it's not U Ukraine starting the offensive. This time, it was uh, the DPR launching a lot of strikes backs against uh, the Ukrainian forces there for the assassination of uh, one of what they called their war hero there. Uh, I do know, and I have to say alleged because I haven't had a chance to be able to follow up on this, but Petro Poroshenko had, had promised a retaliation and an assassination of one of the members for the deaths, of, uh, from what I understand, 15 
of the prisoners of war that, that died in their hands. Uh, and this is also kind of let you know, that's what the article says here in Russian, that Petro Poroshenko about a month prior had already warned of a retaliation for the deaths of the 15 prisoners of war that happened while they were in uh, the care of the uh, 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 Donetsk People's Republic, or Donbass People's Republic there. Uh, anyhow, again, I have to say alleged from my point because I have not been able to, to look to see if this was true before coming on the air tonight. So it may very well be true. I don't know the case. But nonetheless, Petro Poroshenko did so. They did get down inside of, uh, inside, uh, behind enemy lines, so to speak, uh, for, for, for Kiev. And they carried out the attack, which uh, no doubt makes the DPR pretty nervous to know that they were actually able to carry out an attack inside of their own uh, territory. Uh, so continuing on, let's move on as well. Uh, in Mosul, we reported last night that the, that the, uh, the attack had been launched. Some people had, had questioned, they said, Steve, it's not happened from what we can see. We're, we're not seeing it in the uh, mainstream media in the United States. I uh, wanted to let you know where my source was that, for that. It was on Iraqi television. It says, Operation to Capture Mosul in Iraq from ISIS has started. This was according to Iraqi TV. I assumed that the air campaign began as well, but from what I understand, it was not the air campaign. Even the television footage shows the tanks firing at Mosul. From what I understand now, uh, in, in looking at some of the updates on this, they were doing this to soften up uh, the, the different uh, ISIS forces inside of Mosul, but the actual full-fledged air assault had not begun. But they did begin to drop leaflets, etc. But that's what they were saying there. Also, we know that the French, uh, as well, have been involved in this, and they had already started <coughs> artillery attacks as well. Sorry, get this turned down here real quick. But the French, as well, are involved in it. They were getting the go-ahead and again, as the French are saying, it was to soften up the targets. You can see the black haze over the sky. That's from the burning oil that they have been burning. Uh, but the French got the go ahead and now they were firing off 155 millimeter howitzers uh, there into Mosul to weaken up their targets as well. Um, continuing on, other articles as well. International Business Times, U.S. military has started shelling Mosul, says uh, Pishmerga. Commander, commander of Omar Hassan claimed U.S. howitzers had started bombing the northern Iraqi city, uh, according to what they were reporting as well. Uh, as we move on in other news there, another thing that was kind of interesting uh, to me, especially since we had heard that the U.S. was going to allow 9,000 ISIS members escape into Syria, which if that were to be the case, it would just kind of show even more so that Obama is definitely supporting the ISIS uh, militants. But according to this report here on S SMMS, uh, Special Monitoring Mission uh, to Syria, it says Iraqi military to stop ISIS escape to Syria is what they're saying now. A senior commander of the Iraqi forces said that his forces shall block the escape path for ISIS terrorists who are now surrounded in Mosul to Syria. The Iraqi forces spokesman uh, Hamad al-Assadi said that the country's forces will not allow ISIS to flee to Syria. So uh, it's a good thing for President Bashar al-Assad. And speaking of President Bashar al-Assad, I wanted you to see this clip here. This is actually on uh, a channel that uh, supposedly is part of uh, uh, the Syrian channel, from what I understand. And in this interview here with a Russian television uh, news anchor, he has asked about the, the, what role Turkey is playing that now that they are in his country. And I think you ought to hear what President Bashar al-Assad has to say about Turkey. Like nothing happened. Uh, what's your opinion about the role of Turkey in this war and about this intervention? If we start from today, it's invasion. Invasion. This incursion is invasion. Whether a small part or a big, large part of, of the Syrian territory is invasion uh, against international law, against the moral, against the sovereignty of Syria. Uh, but what do the, Turkish, the Turks want from this invasion, regardless of the uh, mask that they wear yeah. to cover their intention, real intentions? Uh, they wanted to wash, whitewash uh, their real intention that they used to support ISIS 
And you think they don't, they don't support now? No, they still support, but they came, they say we are fighting ISIS. We are, we are going it's to ridiculous. have... When they tell, it's ridiculous. Of when they tell they we are fighting with ISIS, they made ISIS. Exactly, they, they made ISIS, they supported ISIS, they give them all the logistical support and they allow them to sell our oil uh, uh, through their border, through their territory, with the participation of er Erdogan's son in his uh, coterie. They, they all, all of them were involved in, uh, in, this, in the relation with the ISIS. So all as the President Bashar al-Assad is saying here, if you were able to hear this okay. Uh, he said it's an invasion. No matter what, which way you look at it, it's an invasion. And he said they're trying to put a mask on. They're wanting to whitewash their record from supporting ISIS. And of course, he also goes to say that they created ISIS. Well, we know that the United States Obama administration is the one that created ISIS, but no doubt in collaboration with President Erdogan. And he also mentioned that it was Erdogan's son that was doing the selling of Syrian oil going back through his country. So he even knows who was guilty of stealing the oil from Syria. We do know that it was going in through Turkey to begin with. That was proven by Russia. Clearly, uh, the evidence through the uh, drones, etc., that they were able to document that, as well as all the special reports that Russia has done that clearly uh, identifies that uh, by documentation that they were keeping there, that they were actually selling the oil through Turkey and Turkey was selling it into European nations. Uh, these, these, these were the uh, low buyers there making a fortune because the gas pumps, of course, in Europe never went down at all. So somebody was definitely making a fortune off of that. And according to President Bashar al-Assad, it was Erdogan's son that was profiting from doing this particular act. But again, uh, President Bashar al-Assad is calling Turkey's presence in his country an invasion. And I have always held to the fact that the coup that Erdogan did was staged by the United States in order to be able to get the Turkish forces into Syria so that when the United States would take and launch an attack uh, on uh, Bashar al-Assad directly through an air campaign, that they would then have the Turkish military already there and ready to go in order to be able to take over uh, the country as soon as they felt like that Assad would fall. That's been my thought from the beginning. And I can't say that I've changed it since then. Anyway, before we close, let me just mention one other thing too. Uh, the, 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 the man that actually had posted the video about uh, um, Rick Warren, we had mentioned in our broadcast last night about Rick Warren, and I called him brother, and it was a different Rick Warren. And a lot of people made the mistake uh, thinking that I'm speaking about the Rick Warren of Saddleback uh, Church in California but uh, it's actually a friend of mine called Rick A. Warren, his middle name has an A in it, on Facebook there, um, that, uh, that were friends that had sent me the information about Mosul being under attack, and that was the Iranian television news broadcast that that was going on. Uh, but at any rate, there, there was a brother that had made a video uh, saying that I was now involved with Rick Warren and calling him brother, etc., and he did come and he apologized uh, publicly for that. Uh, and I very much, I wanted to say, I was very thankful that he did that. And we, we, were, we are sorry as well that we had to make a, a video immediately to counter what had been brought out. Uh, I knew that once he realized that it was wrong, I knew I felt confident that he would take it down anyway. But uh, to make sure that you understand why, if the brother happens to listen to this tonight, brother, completely forgiven because I realized you were not the only one uh, other than the fact that you'd made the video that a lot of people felt like that there's people that actually said they would never listen to me again and left I have no idea if they'll ever come back again or not uh, but a lot of people just misunderstood because I didn't make it clear and I, at the moment I wasn't even thinking about uh, the Rick Warren of Saddleback, Saddle, Saddleback Church in California uh, the Rick Warren I know lives in uh, North Carolina and uh, totally different guy altogether. And you have to remember, there's a lot of people with the same names. If, if you have the name John Smith, believe me, there's thousands and thousands of John Smiths. Warren is a very well-known name, and Rick is also a known name. And in fact, if you were to Google it, uh, just as far as names, there is quite a few people with the name Rick Warren or Richard Warren, etc. So, uh, but, but at any rate there, we had to make the video also, not just because the brother that had made the video, we know that goes like wildfire once my name is attached to a video that I did something that was wrong. Uh, 
uh, but as well for the sake of so many people that were listening that if I didn't address it, then they would not know. Uh, once we, though, get to a place where we know enough people have actually been able to hear uh, and note that this was corrected, then we will actually move our video off as well uh, because I don't want uh, this to be up there any, any longer. It needs to be done and be dealt with and be and, and completely done. And also, uh, from what I understood, there was a lot of people that were very harsh on this man. And uh, I, I really... I appreciate people sticking up for me, but always remember, do it in love. Do it in love. Always remember the person you never know. person may not have known, may not have, they, they, they no doubt, which in his case here, he, he even publicly apologizes, so I know he didn't mean to. Uh, but uh, my wife even noted to me that he had said that he would unsubscribe, and, and I didn't want him to do something like that. The only thing that we had to do is, it's like damage control. You have to let the people know what really is going on. And so that if the video goes crazy everywhere, you know, then the people would know that, no, it was not true because there's no telling how many people watch it before he was able to take it down. So anyway, we love you, brother, and we thank you for, for making that stand and what you did to take the time to apologize as well. And, uh, and hope you'll come back. So anyway, and all the rest, I know that many of you as well said, you know, sent, sent me your sentiments as well that, uh, you're sorry you didn't mean to, you, you, you had the same impression as well, and that's why I had to make the video as well for the sake of the other people too, that they would know that no, it is a different guy altogether. Anyway, God bless you all, have a great evening, and talk to you tomorrow. Shalom.